Jonathan Wallace is 18 years old. If I'm hungry, I'll have something to eat. And then it won't stop. I'll just keep on eating. He is Britain's fattest teenager. 30 stones. Our cameras followed him for a year as he struggled to lose half his body weight and change his life. I've been getting pains in my heart lately. Childhood obesity in England has doubled over the last 10 years, and one in four children are now deemed clinically obese. Jonathan Wallace's eating habits have been spiraling out of control for years. Still in his teens, he's 14 stone overweight. And it just doesn't seem to want to control it. It's comfort when you're feeling down, or boredom. Boredom's the most boredom. He wants to be who he is. Exactly, that he's I'd be worried all the time. He still deny it. He denies it. Every over it. My mum nags and me cries. Jonathan lives on an estate in Hartlepool in the northeast of England, an area where obesity rates are above the national average. Yeah, he didn't used to be really that big. He used to be like just a normal sized kid, really. Well, near enough. John Boy, yeah. Fat lad. <laughs> Skill built. It wouldn't look right if he lost any weight. Because I'm used to saying him very big, and if he lost weight, it just wouldn't be the same job by no more. Oh! Jonathan is six foot five inches tall and weighs over 30 stone. At this size, with his body storing considerable excess fat, he is morbidly obese. Going in the freezer to get me lasagna. He just try, he tries and tries and tries. He keeps saying, I need to lose weight, I'm going to kill myself. And he said, well, you've got to do something about it. But going narrow and out the other. That's the way I get my microwave like working. It's hard when he's so much in love with food. I know I've got a problem with food. And he's addicted to food. My pastries, I'm very, very fond of my pastries. I just noticed yesterday when he put his trousers on, he's massive, he's getting bigger and bigger. Nine minutes. Plus, been for eight and a half, but I put it in nine, so it's definitely cooked. His ankles. He's been in the hospital so many times that they said if he goes over on them again, he's torn his ligaments that many times, he'd have to have a major operation on them. When they say you've got to taste your food before you serve it, they mean a teaspoon. I use a tablespoon. Terrible breathing. When I lay on my front, and you get up, and you start breathing, you go, like that, and you got a, you got a ooh, sharp pain straight in the eye. Despite his health problems, for years Jonathan has spent his nights secretly binge eating. The microwave buzzes, so I lift the microwave up and wedge something underneath so it doesn't buzz in the middle of the night, so it doesn't wake my mother up. From tea time to two and three o'clock in the morning, he'd stay up and eat him. And that's cooking away. And then I've got something in the oven cooking away. You know, when you used to get the frozen weight watches means or something like that. You wouldn't eat one, two or three. Jonathan's overeating is the cause of serious family oh, tensions. Well, how'd you get so much mess? Get out! Who oh, are you, you mean? Go back out, go back to work. Yeah, we'll go now. I just wish you'd tie me back to We'll go out there! Lasagnas and curries. Oh, like, do you know, like American fried chicken, like, but in a bag and that, and shot in the oven to cook, that. Then I saw. Oh, I'm all screaming and shouting at him, leave the food there, I can't afford to keep you going on in food. And he just, it wasn't me. But you know it was him, I've caught him, it wasn't me. <laughs> Two years ago, Jonathan discovered he had a condition related to obesity, known as sleep apnea. It's a condition where you can stop breathing six, seven hundred times a night. Well, I don't know what what is me sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. Every time his oxygen levels drop, they put a, a severe strain on his heart. Last year, Jonathan's mother made a very public cry for help. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Jonathan, we've come here today because we need help, and we know we do, don't we? Mm. All of us. 
I don't want to see you die. Sometimes I just really don't think that. I have, like, a bit of me does think that I've got that much to live. Mm. A bit of it doesn't, because, like, I'm having, like, fun with my life now. But Jonathan has tried and failed to curb his eating enthusiasm before. With his mum often at work and a dad who left home when he was young, Jonathan seeks solace in food. Left alone, he can gorge himself on over six meals a day. Until recently, Jonathan seemed unwilling to face up to the reality of his addiction. It took his doctor to convince him. When I first saw Jonathan, he, he arrives, most people arrive, without any belief there's anything wrong with themselves. Done some uh, tests on him and the results came back. And the doctor sat him down and he said, I'll give you five years to live if you don't do something about it. He said, because your heart is really, really taking the strain and it's going to kill you. A year ago, Jonathan Wallace was dubbed the fattest teenager in Britain. He is morbidly obese. And unless he makes radical changes to his lifestyle, he could be dead within five years. When he was born, he was only six, eleven, tiny little baby. When he got to about two, he was chubby. I wouldn't say he was massive. I wasn't. I, I was at fat, but I wasn't out out like I am now. It's when he got to nine and ten he got really big. He was born round to his aunties and eating. He was going round to. <laughs> His nanas and eating. Uh, anyway, he'd just go and get full wherever he could, just getting bigger and bigger. Jonathan has been unemployed yeah. since leaving school two years ago. He attends a local youth organisation to help his search for work. Ironically, Jonathan dreams of becoming a chef. Jonathan's dyslexic. He can read or write properly, he tries. He, he can. He knows somewhere, you know, he can write his name and things like that. But if anything comes on the telly, he'll say, like, what does that say? As well as dyslexia, for years Jonathan has suffered at the hands of bullies. You know, you got bullied now, and you're sick of it, like, sick of, like, hugging it up, keeping it inside. Oh, he said my fight's done enough over bullying. Especially our club, and everyone calls us Waller. Like, this man once called me Waller, Rick Waller, in the kebab shop. And my girlfriend said, leave him alone, he's not Rick Waller. He still does get name called now. But he gives back as much as he give, gets now. You fat bastard, you fat bastard, you're off Trisha, sure, like that. And I said, hey, like that. I thought I'll ignore him. And then he, he started singing it again, this man went, what'd you say? He went, there's a fat cunt off Trisha. Like that, and the man just took his necklace off. Have you seen them? Like the necklace, big thick ones, like wedding rings. He just went smack and whack him across the face of the wall, what's that for? He went, and that's for calling him. So leave him alone. He's a good lad, and I've seen him on the telly. And I thought, oh, nice one. After years of being in denial, Jonathan's eating habits remain out of control. I don't know what they're eating out of the house. That's the big part of it. You never know, and you can't watch your kids 24 hours a day. The snacks, though, the, the there. Like, we've got KFC, Pizza Hut, uh, what is it? Burger King, McDonald's. They're all over the place around here. Fish and chip shop, Chinese shop down the end, bottom. Another Chinese shop over there. I can't help it, man. If you're tempted to get some. So, you're looking forward to your night out? Yeah, of course, yeah. Really? Uh... Yeah, I am. Jonathan's extended family haven't always helped in his battle against obesity. They regularly join him at the local Chinese for the all-you-can-eat buffet. My cousin lives next door to me, about five doors down my auntie lives. Yeah. And over the road, that auntie, my other auntie, sir. And on the corners, me nanas and me other auntie. You can have a meal in one house. You can have a meal in one house and get, house. get a snack. And then have a snack there, Back and then it creates a few bars of chocolate. That's him. Just goes on a big circle, he goes everywhere. Like, he can go, he can have his tea in here. We can see his mum bring it in, then come in mine. And see he's had nothing to eat, and then eat. The kids has leftovers, won't he? Yeah. <laughs> he's good at that lately. Yeah. He loves the leftovers. I used to do all our dinners before, vegetables and that. But with work, and now I don't seem to have the time, so... We'd have one on a Sunday. Sometimes with me work and I can't, I'm tired, I come in, I'm too tired. It's my fault. 
and I got the fish shop, uh, Kentucky, things like that, you know. <laughs> I had a diet, right, for about five weeks, right? And my nana, like, helped me. And then my mum, she go and buy sweets and all this and that. I was going, my nana was kicking off at us, and I'll get you. This is my wife to be. Oh, Not this. My name's Gemma. Gemma Forces. No, I don't need that set up there, man, tell it. Force it in. <laughs> I'm really joking. Jonathan met 17-year-old Gemma in a nightclub a year ago, and they've been together ever since. I don't care if it was 80 stone, and he couldn't get out the house, it wouldn't make any difference. Because you don't go by size, you go by what they are, not, who, not what they look like. His mum said to me, try and make him stop eating, and I tried it, and it just didn't work. But discovering he may only have five years to live has finally shocked Jonathan into action. I've been looking up on the internet, like, so I know what the con consequences are. And on, only some of them work. Jonathan wants invasive surgery to bypass his stomach and to reduce his calorie intake. Some of them knock up and all. Say, like, the stitches and that pop, like that. Some actually does that. It's a life-changing decision. When he gets this operation, I think he's got to lose it. It's got to end because his stomach can only be about that big and can't eat much and it's bound to come off. It's now two months since Jonathan joined the waiting list for the operation. This morning, he's received the news that he's been waiting for. Surgery has been confirmed for September. The gastric bypass procedure effectively reduces the size of the stomach by bypassing food through part of the small intestine. This results in less food being absorbed by the body. I want to get it done. I want to make my stomach stable. I think it's the last resort now. I think there's a skinny person in every one of us, isn't there, crying to be out? Not in you, mother. And if it gets <laughs> that done, and he has the stapling, he has every chance. Being a skinny person. I don't want to be skinny, skinny. I want to be like chubby. I'm not like skinny, <laughs> skinny, skinny, skinny. The operation has been hailed as a miracle cure for obesity, but it's not without its complications. One percent of those who have the surgery do not survive. For it to be a long-term success, the patient must also radically adjust their lifestyle. In one month, Jonathan will travel to Leeds for his operation which will be performed by consultant surgeon Mr Stephen Pollard. The future for somebody like Jonathan is actually quite dismal. He is already 31 stone at 18 and that is massive obesity at that age. He is inevitably going to become diabetic in his lifetime. It's very unlikely he would survive into beyond retirement age, but even if he were to, he'd have appalling quality of life because by then his joints, which are designed to take the weight of a 15 stone man, will be completely worn out. There'll be no cartilage left on his knees. His ankles are already causing him problems now at 18. There are two options. The first is keyhole surgery, which would require Jonathan to lose three stone before the operation could take place. The second is open surgery, a riskier procedure, which would leave Jonathan with 50 staples in his stomach, but which wouldn't require him to lose weight beforehand. My girlfriend's like, she said, you were going to get keel, so why didn't you get keel? I said, because I want open. She said, you don't have to lose free stone, so you don't want to get that done, you want to go the easy way. I said, I don't know, I want to do this my way. A very typical story I get from patients who I see in middle age is they were 10 stone at 10 and 20 stone at 20. But I shudder to think what weight Jonathan will reach by middle age. He could be one of these patients who gets up to the sort of 50, 60 stone, which is the heaviest weight we've seen patients coming in at. He said, and, and if you drink a lot of alcohol, it will put weight on your bit anyway because it's liquid, isn't it? And like, it absorbs all the fat in it. So he said, the diet probably wouldn't work if you were still doing that. <laughs> but you can't help but drink. <laughs> Jonathan's weight causes him everyday problems. With a 58-inch waist and size 15 feet, clothes shopping is particularly problematic. 
he is constantly tempted by clothes that simply won't fit. I like the wear, modern stuff I like the wear now, not like what men wear. In Hartlepool, Jonathan is limited to a single shop which specializes in outsized clothing. They're the only one who has the sizes for me. Hello. I'm going to go clubbing tonight to show the town up. Despite his decision to undergo surgery, Jonathan makes no attempt to change his normal routine. A typical Saturday night out begins with Gemma and friends at a local pub before moving on to their favorite nightclub. Usually before I want to go clubbing, I make half a bottle of vodka straight, neat. And I'm like, gone. <laughs> Before I took 90 quid out and I came home with a fiver and I can't remember the night, so that was a good night for me. Closing time comes at 3 a.m. and by now Jonathan has sunk half a litre of vodka and 10 pints of beer. With the operation getting closer, he shouldn't be drinking at all. With surgery only 10 days away, Jonathan has been asked to go on a special diet to help reduce the size of his liver. The smaller his liver, the easier it will be for the surgeon to access his stomach. No fat and butter. Where's to get this? It's crop. Want something like that? That's better. I'm gonna miss this, see? Fizzy pot, oh, it's gorgeous. Vegetables and salad. Pork crackling. Bare ribs, ooh. You're not excited now, man. Although Jonathan's addiction to food has become life-threatening, he continues to downplay its significance. I wouldn't like to be on smoke. I'd rather die of food than drugs. Just after I'm taking drugs. Pathetic. Chicken Kiev's. Oh. Well, and pot noodles. Oh, look at them. Why? Look at these. I've never even heard of these vodkas. You have to die young, you have to die young, don't you? That's all I miss. And if I do this, and I do die, well, then it was meant to be, wasn't it? The operation is tomorrow. Ignoring the rules of his pre-op diet, Jonathan stops off in his local calf for one last full English breakfast. It's up to him at the end of the day to get a piece of self. I mean, he's got a lot of help, hasn't he? And if you don't use that help, then what can you do? It's up to the individual. I mean, I'm not skinny, but you either want to lose weight or you don't, don't you? In your adult life, what's the lightest you've ever been? Would you say roughly? 13. What? 13. 13 stone? Yeah, that's when I was 15 or something. I mean, obviously, no disrespect to you, and if you don't want me to talk about it, tell me to shut up. But it must be difficult for you even to go in the bath, mustn't it, seriously? Don't go in the bath, go in the shower. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Is there any medical reason for why you are like that? No, purely. Purely down to gluttony. <laughs> mm. You know what I'm saying? When I see you in a couple of years, when I'm walking about, you don't do what you do. You'll say to me, hey, Ian, I'm glad you said that because I feel 100% better now than what I did when I first talked to you in that cafe. See you later. Huh? Oh. <laughs> hey. Hey? God! As the journey to hospital begins, Jonathan seems blissfully unconcerned about the events of the next 48 hours. Feeling suave, cushy. He's lying. Yeah, well, won't worry. When he's Obvious. in front of the cameras, he doesn't gonna tell them. Live? When he's with me, he always says, I'm worried, I'm nervous, I'm worried, I'm no, panicking don't. in case anything goes wrong. Don't lie. No, don't. Do what? Yeah? Look at me. Do what? Yeah. Yeah, you did yesterday and the day before. Yeah, but I, of course I'm going to be a bit worried. Fucking hell. 
Yeah, We're going in fine. for this big operation and I might die. Might die. Oh, how do I feel? I'm nervous. It'll be the last time I see him on Wednesday and he'd have had the operation. I'm not being lazy though, I'm half tried it, haven't I? No. Yeah, you have half tried that. It's sort of you you think I haven't, but how would you know? You weren't there when I was doing them. Yeah, I should have done one last thing for him, which is attend to a diet and he's gonna do this operation for you and you couldn't even do that. What? Get up! Stop being a wind. Get up! Are you whinging for me? Like, I mean, the boy, he's going away, isn't he? And he's going to have an operation, and we know it's going to help him. Gemma? 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 What? Sorry. It's compulsive feature, and I thought, well, it's his own fault, and people are not going to help him, but he, he's finally getting the help he needs, and it's for life. So, oh, I'm excited. <laughs> Hi, I'm Glenda, I'm a dietitian. Hello. So I've just come to make sure that uh, you're all right and you know exactly what you're signing up for. Mm. So nothing that you're particularly anxious about or anything that you want to ask me before you sign on that dotted line. Mm. And you do know that it's pretty much irreversible, so mm -hmm. yeah, he thought that all through. Before his surgery the following day, the hospital has prepared a special light supper for Jonathan, but he has other ideas. Do you think that it's going to be easier than what it is? Oh, well, how is this good for you? It's cake and syrup and everything. Boost. Um. It's 3.45 p.m. In 15 minutes, Jonathan will undergo surgery. I'm going to pull back off. Give me a cuddle, man. I love you. So, I love you. The operation has a 90% success rate. For Jonathan, it's a potential lifeline. Last year, morbidly obese teenager Jonathan Wallace was told he had five years to live. After a lifelong struggle with his weight, Jonathan has decided that invasive stomach surgery is the only solution. We're going to change that lifestyle, aren't we, Jonathan? You'll be getting up at 8 o'clock in the morning to go to the gym. So we get some of the weight off. That's how you're going to get... The operation will be performed by one of the UK's leading specialist surgeons, Stephen Pollard. The procedure will last 90 minutes. When it's over, Jonathan will have a new stomach and he'll be left with a 15-inch scar as a reminder. Just making an incision to access the stomach and the first observation is that his liver is massively in enlarged with fat infiltration. Well, I'm glad that's not my liver. We try to make Jonathan improve his life expectancy and his medical quality of life. That's the thrust of this operation. Has a cosmetic impact, obviously. That isn't the primary reason for doing it. It's to stop Jonathan dying with diabetes and heart disease. That's what we're aiming to do. I think they'd be happier. A lot happier. It's a piece of fact we've just excised from the abdominal wall. It was just uh, going to make it easier to close the wound afterwards. So his liver's enormous. Uh, probably two or three times its correct size, its normal size, and half of that will be fat. I'm trying to go to be so late. This is the new small stomach here, and it really is very tiny. We're now going to make a bypass out of the intestine so that even that pouch won't get all its contents absorbed. And for this, we go to the lower compartment of the abdomen, below this, which is the large intestine, to this, which is the small bowel, and this is what we're going to bypass. To begin with, this is very tight, this opening, and it'll be a bit swollen from the surgery, and so he can't go straight onto solids. So immediately after the operation, for the first few weeks, he's going to be on pureed food. It's now 5.35 p.m. The bypass has been a success. After removing 500 grams of fat from Jonathan's stomach wall, Mr. Pollard closes the wound with titanium staples.
After a night in intensive care with girlfriend Gemma at his side, Jonathan has been brought back to his room. Monday night I was worried because I knew that he was getting the operation in the morning, but Tuesday night I know that he was getting better. Monday night I didn't have a sleep. Get well soon to Jonathan. Hope you'll get well soon. I love you. Loads and loads. Come Jenna. Kiss up, kiss up, kiss up, kiss up. Kiss, 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 kiss. With Jonathan out of danger, his mum and two aunts have come to visit. After three days, Jonathan returns home. He's on anti-acid medication and expected to eat only five teaspoons of food a day, the equivalent of 500 calories. Jonathan's stomach will not tolerate a greater volume any more and he will vomit. But Jonathan's obsession with food is deep-rooted and he continues to fantasize. Buffet, chicken pie, ball of the crisps, bottle of Dr. Pepper, and steak pie. Thick kidney pie for a minimum. But then this fucking shit. Mum tried to make some Sunday's dinner, but it was all blended down and that, and the chicken. Yeah. Anyway, I had two days open, so came back up. Yeah. And the doctor said you probably got up to 15 stone or something like that. I said, no, man, or 20 or something would be me. I'd like 20. Only able to consume food in small quantities, it isn't long before Jonathan begins to regret his decision. When I decided to have this operation, I think my mum was more like in there pushing me, go on, get it done, get it done. But like the other day I was thinking, I don't even want this done, probably. I was just thinking it in my head because everyone was saying, get it done, get it done, it's good. It's better if you get it done, you lose weight quicker and this and that. But now I wish I just went into one of them fat camp things and lost it there. Just no, just don't me head in. Maybe if I shrunk my stomach normal way, instead of getting an operation done. I've had it done like a week and I've lost half a stone. And I started eating normal food. I don't know, a couple of months, something like that, a couple of weeks. So I think, I think I took the easy way out, losing weight. Well, when I lose my weight, all this is there, it's gonna go to low skin. So when all my stomach started, I'm gonna go to the gym. I don't know how to get it pumped up now, try to not let it sag. Torn it up, that's what I wanna do, try to do that. It's two months since his surgery and Jonathan is scheduled for a follow-up consultation with Mr. Pollard. He's still battling his food cravings. I've had no breakfast today, but I've got a bag of crisps though. But I can't eat the crisps, I only have to him the lick this flailed off. Today Gemma has asked not to be filmed, but on the journey to Leeds, she questions Jonathan's commitment to his new eating regime. Well why am I lying? What did you do? What? So do I eat a full curry? Can I eat a full curry? Well, no, 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 when you're when your thing is oh, so Stop crying. You just never tell me no because you act normal and then soon you're in front of the camera you just lie about everything and come off of all sorts. Do yeah, you do. do. No, I don't. You do. No, I don't. You lie about everything. Yeah, you I lie about everything, do. mate. Yeah. That's why I lashed out last yeah. time. Yeah. 
Because when you when you're on the way to Leeds, you were lying about everything. I'm a lying. Yes. Eh? yes. I would have more my lying about that. Do we eat the full curry? Yeah? You sit there. Do we eat the like full curry? Yeah? No, no, I'm not exactly. about curry. No. When you go in the car, oh, then I said, go. I said, you're not taking your tablets, and you said, yeah, yeah, I'm still taking them. I I'm said, taking no, them now and again. You said I've been taking them three times a day. I said, no, you've not even took one Does tablet for six weeks. I said I've been taking them. No one again. That's why. No one again. Because you're not taking tablets. Oh, whatever. Fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck off. Why do you want me for me then? Sure. How's it been? It's been okay. Sure? Aye. It takes a bit of getting used to, doesn't it? Teething problems. First yeah. six weeks are usually the most difficult period and it's not uncommon, for instance, to get sickness if you cheat on the diet or if you don't take your tablets yeah, and things I've like been, that. Like, I've been eating food and like kind of forced and trying to, trying to, right? But it doesn't work because it comes back doesn't, up. It doesn't let you do it. At this stage, you should probably be eating four or five meals a day and drinking plenty between meals, but giving it a good half hour before and after the meal for the food to, to start to digest. If you do that, you won't be sick. It's changed his life totally, totally. Because if, if he never had the operation, if you think about it, he would have just got bigger and bigger and bigger. He'd end up killing himself. Why not? At least he's got a new lease of life. I'm going to pop you on the scales now, see how much you've lost. Most people aren't sick with this, and a lot of sickness is due to struggling to follow to the word of the letter, what was in those guidelines. Mm. 81 and 89, so you're 170 kilos. Your original starting weight was 32 stone. OK? That's what you weighed when you came in. So your weight loss to date is just over 5 stone, which is about bang on where we'd want to see it at this stage. Most of it was comfort eating. You know, getting depressed because he was so big and he couldn't get about and things like that. Frightened going out because he was going to get caught, but now he's... You know, people at uh, a forum saying, oh, good on you, Jonathan, you're looking great. So what we'd like to do, just roughly, is I'd like to get you to see less than 20 stone at a year. Mm. That's 12 stone down. Do you drink much alcohol? Mm. Do you? I've still been drinking it a bit. Like, I even been, like, this week I even don't drink. I bought, I bought some drink for Halloween, and I thought, no, I won't. Good. Did you have any problems with the wound after you went home? Um, no, I just thought it was all right. That looks fine. That's healed well, isn't it? No fluid or discharge from it. It'll fade. Don't let it get in the sun this year. But the, the redness will go over the next few weeks. It's Jonathan's first Christmas since he's had his operation. He finds it hard to keep his food down. But... Still early days. But he's doing fantastic and he looks great and he's gonna live. And that's the best thing about it. Happy Christmas and a good new year. It's not nice seeing a man to run out and be sick, but he seems to be happy now. We can see it's coming off. He's at the baby face now. <laughs> I think it's the best part of all Christmas when you carve the chicken or turkey. Just one of them things in it. Although Jonathan is struggling to manage his diet and continues to overeat, he's already lost four stone in three months. You know what I used to do before? I used to be full as man. I just used to bear and I used to eat more. <laughs> Normally, at Christmas, we, um, when I have my food, it's usually piled up. Like, you, it's that piled up that you can't put any more on. So, like, no, it's not. It's just a bit of everything. Got a little kid in. Be like, about three puddings, one turkey. Be like, about five of them. So be all mountain dub. I'm full of me. Literally. Ooh. Can you imagine that roast, I'm not going to try, because if I do, I might be sick. To achieve his target weight loss, Sorry. it's not only Jonathan's eating habits which need to change. Mr. Pollard has asked him to follow a year-long exercise program. Oh, first day. Not looking forward to it, mind. And that's going to be hard. Probably hard anyway. So, yeah. Going to be fucking hard. All right, yeah. Jonathan's trainer will be local gym owner and four times Mr. Universe, Eddie Elwood. I think there's a lot of obese kids nowadays and it's it's down to, you know, I mean, when we were kids there wasn't so many fast food restaurants and people just get lazy, you know, you don't see that many people cooping nowadays and cooping good food and, and, and natural foods. 
So I think it's, it is, uh, it's on a steady rise and it's a shame. I'm going to give you 30 or 40 minutes exercise three times a week. Um, it's pretty intense for you because obviously you're not used to it. But once, we, once you get into it, you'll probably start enjoying it. Because everyone think, oh, you're just lazy. Well, like, I'm lazy though, but if I can't do it, I, I, well, like, I can do it, I know I can, I've done it before. How do you feel after that? I'm aching. Your arms are aching? Your heart's pumping? If John's willing to give the discipline and he enjoys it, and it's not a chore to him, and he really gets stuck in with his diet, in six months he could lose, safely could lose another four stone. I want you to be able to leave go of them handles and walk with your hands by your sides. That's it. This moment in time he's going to have to start from the very, very basics. Uh, just doing a few minutes exercise and use that as a progressive goal and just increase it each week. After only two weeks training at the gym, Jonathan is already finding excuses to pack it in. Well, he doesn't go to the gym. Just couldn't be bothered. The only way he's going to lose weight is because of the operation. Um, it's not, nothing down to hard work with his diet or with the gym. He's not prepared to do any of that, you know, that's evident. The people in there, it's, and I don't know them, and the doctor said don't lift heavy weight, and no. but he thought, but he's been getting me on them, and I said, no, oh, you have to lift these, you know, lift them. So they'll be being all the way to the fat, but then again, they put muscle on your donor, so it's more weight on you. And plus, I might strain my stomach. When he came, he seemed to be enjoying it, you know. I was pushing him and he seemed to be enjoying it. I wasn't pushing him too hard, I was taking him moderately. And um, everything was gradually progressive. And he seemed to enjoy it. He was having a bit of crack with people in the gym. And um, like you say, I was, I was a bit bewildered why he missed, you know. And just, I thought it might have been just a, a little slip up on, at, at first. I thought he would come back, but you know, obviously that's, that's his character. It's always going to be with him, I think. Because I'm not going with no one, like going to the gym, no one. Like, I haven't got someone to, you know, to come with me. That's what it is. What's the point going on your own? You just sit there, like, going with doing this stuff. When you can go with someone and you have a laugh with them and all while they're doing it, <clears throat> you talk about stuff while you're doing it. Although he refuses to exercise, there is one thing Jonathan won't give up alcohol. But the size of his new stomach means that ten pints a night are a thing of the past. Still drink loads of that, but not enough. Like, see that there? It's all right. Look, it's out of a can of this. Fizzy as I can drink. It's got to be flat, so like, can of. Still doing that one again, you know, like, cook more than I should eat. And, like, I'm like, oh, crap, what? Well, end up cooking, like, well, five pints or something like that, too. <laughs> Like little pies about the biggest one. Yeah, I need mean, about two or one. Sometimes I, I, yesterday I made like a little keddy and pasta and that. I ate about five spoonfuls of sardine on me and that. Give me mama. Jonathan has now been recovering from his surgery for five months. Changing his lifestyle has proved difficult. And now possibly the worst job opportunity in Hartlepool is about to present itself. It's been a difficult six months since teenager Jonathan Wallace underwent a stomach bypass. Despite his doctor's advice, he's given up the gym and is still making himself sick through overeating. Jonathan has lost weight, but his progress is overshadowed by a new job, working alongside girlfriend Gemma in his local kebab shop. I'll tell you something, right? Before I got my stomach done, it was to get kebabs on ticky from here. Tell you, man, didn't have to pay for them. Two Parmesans, please. Garlic, please. I ran a 25 quid bill up, man. That like done the way it was, but what he wanted to do in his first house, didn't it? Made him a lot more confident. You go out clubbing, you go, oh, I'll have a kebab, right? But when you're working with it, you're like, ugh. Sick of it. You're sick of looking at it and smelling it. You go home stinking of it. It's horrible. After just two weeks of serving kebabs, Jonathan unexpectedly decides to quit. 
and I admit the kebab shop was a bit a bit hefty for my first job after I got my stomach done because like the fat food and the, and the grease and all that. At home, Jonathan is still struggling to get his new stomach to accept his favourite foods. This is what I live on me. Noodles. Make way with fried rice. Yes. Pasta gorgeous. I think if we'd have got the band on instead of stapled, it'd have bust the band by now. Three of them I used to eat, well three of them at a time, right? I know, big. I ate about one, half a one, maybe. You're still eating the same sorts of food, but just smaller portions. Fish. And he still has takeaways every now and I think he might only have them once a week now. He still drinks, but he doesn't, he doesn't go out down the town now. He stopped that, he said, I'm going to stop that. But he'll, he'll have a drink in the house. I mean, he come in with six cans and he would drank Tony. He feels drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Although unemployed, Jonathan is now making more effort to exercise, and his friends and family are at last starting to see some positive changes to his lifestyle. What well, could we've just got a puppy there, so he comes and walks out with us, and uh, comes and plays football, and I think he goes swimming now and all. He's a lot fitter. He gets up a lot earlier in the morning, takes the dog out for a walk. He's never in that much now, where before I used to lay in bed, didn't want to get up, couldn't be bothered. But when I do see him, he's not eating, he's like always athletic, he's running about and past my house and now he's always jogging. So he's doing well since he's had the operation. He's even gone down from size 15 short to 12. To like walk down the street, I was <laughs> sweating that pouring out weird. I didn't know what he It's more cleaner and stuff now. It's like, because before when he was big, you know, you could smell him all the time. And when he, if he'd sat down beside you, you'd have to rub your couch down or something like that. But now everything's changed. He's in the shower every day. Before the operation, John was big and he wasn't happy. Now, after the operation, he was, he's happy and more loving. Becky. I don't think I'm gorgeous. I know I'm gorgeous. <laughs> People have hey. said he's calmed down a lot. Doesn't get angry as much. Does a bit around the house a bit more now. Mm. Well, I know I'm sexy, you know what I mean? Just can't change that thing. I think it's because people stop bullying him and calling him and stuff like that, so he doesn't have to retaliate all the time and go on at them. So I think that's mainly why. I'm better with my mum. I'm no more fighting, hardly. Hardly. Sometimes, just not as much. Like, I used to walk in the house and I like, used to be food missing and I used to get the blame for it. Still does now, but it's not me, it's my sister who eats it. And I've told her, because she's going my way, the way I was going. I was told, I told her, Becky, you've got to stop eating. I said, why? She said, oh. I said, well, if you don't stop eating, you'll end up the way I was. She went, I'll just give you operation. I said, you can't, Becky, the thing is, right? I took the easy way. You don't want to. You're, you're still young. You get a loose word now. Seven months since his operation, and Jonathan is in Leeds to see surgeon Stephen Pollard for his final consultation. <laughs> Woo! Now that's 140, 146 kilos. So you're not step on one instead of two. Which is a whisker, it's bang on 23 stone. So that's brilliant. That's certainly nine stone. It's probably a whisker more than that, actually. Mm. Dave, have you got yourself a job? No, I did have one at the beginning. What did you do? Uh, it was, um, what was it? Working in a kebab shop. In a kebab shop? <laughs> yeah, I know, right. Uh, that's oh, not right. the, uh, it's like uh, putting an alcoholic as a uh, publican, isn't it? And are you eating regularly meals during the day, or are you skipping meals and snacking, or what? How's your eating pattern? My girlfriend ordered a, what was it, a kebab, right? I know I shouldn't be eating it, right? <laughs> Listen, I said, oh, I'll get a large one, eh? And then when I saw it, I went, no, I won't ever eat that. And I got a small one, and I didn't even eat half of that. But if you keep trying to overeat, eventually things will start to give, and then uh, the operation can fail. Your diet is average. It's not great, but it's an awful lot better than it was. And you've obviously lost a lot of weight. And we've now seen you starting to exercise. You're running around a football pitch, taking your dog out for a walk. But the important thing is not to break into any bad habits. 
the exercise, you can do more, so do more. In early 2005, Jonathan was morbidly obese. He weighed over 30 stone and was given five years to live. One year on and one gastric bypass later, he's lost nearly a third of his body weight, but surgery can only do so much. If you're fat, it's your responsibility, right? But it's not just your responsibility, it's the people around you. They should be helping you. Like people say, oh, what do you need help for? You do. You watch anyone who goes on a diet, they're like, ugh, down and people, when you go out, you start, you start to get your weight up. And then someone goes out and calls you and says, ah, oh, you're fat, cunt. Like, and you bore, your weight thing goes back down, you're like eating again. That's what's the bad thing about it. I think the outlook is excellent for Jonathan in the future as long as he doesn't start changing things and doing things differently. So he needs to engage in the right changes now and then make that his new lifestyle and then stick with it. Tell you what else grow is evil. Oh, well, how's me girl grow? Come on, tell me. Because you love yourself. Who does? You. Oh, what? Who money gets up and looks in the mirror and goes, Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I'm having a laugh, man. I mean, since they like this for dessert for about half an hour. <laughs> What would I like to change? Me eating habits. Stop, stop putting things in the microwaves and making them, stop them from making noises and stop eating as much. Yeah. I don't know, I think if I had the help, uh, how I have now, if I had the help now, that's when I was little, I might have stopped it. Whether Jonathan can continue to lose weight and remain healthy is now entirely down to him. Next Monday's Hidden Life is that of Greg Valentino, owner of the biggest biceps in the world, which then burst. The man whose arms exploded next Monday at nine, here on Five. Next tonight, we have a series finale double of Big Life. Two aunts have come to visit. Oh. After three days, Jonathan returns home. He's on anti-acid medication and expected to eat only five teaspoons of food a day, the equivalent of 500 calories. Jonathan's stomach will not tolerate a greater volume any more and he will vomit. But Jonathan's obsession with food is deep-rooted and he continues to fantasize. Buffet, chicken pie, ball of the crisps, bottle of Dr. Pepper, and steak pie. I'm trying to make some Sunday's dinner, but it was all blended down and that, like chicken. Yeah. Anyway, I had two days, open so came back up. Yeah. And the doctor said you're probably going up to 15 stone or something like that. I said, no, nah, man, about 20 or something would be me. I'd like 20. Only able to consume food in small quantities, it isn't long before Jonathan begins to regret his decision. When I decided to have this operation, I think my mum was more like in there pushing me, go on, get it done, get it done. But like the other day I was thinking, I don't even want this done, probably. I was just thinking it in my head because everyone was saying, get it done, get it done, it's good. It's better if you get it done, you lose weight quicker and this and that. But now I wish I just went into one of them fat camp things and lost it there. Just you know, just done my head in. Maybe if I shrunk my stomach normal way, instead of getting an operation done. I've had it done like a week and I've lost half a stone. And I started eating normal food. I don't know, a couple of months, something like that, a couple of weeks. So I think I, think I took the easy way out, losing weight. But well, when I lose my weight, all this is here, it's gonna go to loose skin. So when all my stomach's sorted, I'm gonna go to the gym. 
you know, to get pumped up now. Try to not let it sag. Torn Left alone, he can gorge himself on over six meals a day. Until recently, Jonathan seemed unwilling to face up to the reality of his addiction. It took his doctor to convince him. When I first saw Jonathan, he, he arrives, most people arrive, without any belief there's anything wrong with themselves. Done some uh, tests on him and the results came back and the doctor sat him down and he said, I'll give you five years to live if you don't do something about it. He said, because your heart is really, really taking the strain and it's going to kill you. A year ago, Jonathan Wallace was dubbed the fattest teenager in Britain. He is morbidly obese, and unless he makes radical changes to his lifestyle, he could be dead within five years. When he was born, he was only six, eleven, tiny little baby. When he got to about two, he was chubby. I wouldn't say he was massive. I wasn't. I, I was fat, but I wasn't out, out like I am now. It's when he got to. Nine and ten, he got really big. He was going round to his aunties and eating. He was going round to his nanas and eating. Uh, anyway, he was just going, get full wherever he could, just getting bigger and bigger. Jonathan has been unemployed since leaving school two years ago. He attends a local youth organisation to help his search for work. Ironically, Jonathan dreams of becoming a chef. Jonathan's dyslexic. Can read or write properly. He tries. He, he can. He knows somewhere. You know, he can write his name and things like that. But if anything comes on the telly, he'll say like, "What does that say?" As well as dyslexia, for years Jonathan has suffered at the hands of bullies. You know, you got bullied now, and you're sick of it. Like sick of, like hugging it up, keeping it inside. Oh, he said my fights done enough over bullying. Especially our club, and everyone calls us Waller. Like this man once called me Waller, Rick Waller in the kebab shop, and my girlfriend said, leave him alone, he's not Rick Waller. He still does get name called now, but he gives back as much as he give, gets now. You fat bastard, you fat bastard, you're off Trisha, sure, like that. And I said, hey, like that, thought I'll ignore him. And then he, he started singing it again, this man went, what'd you say? He went, there's a fat cunt of Trisha. Like that, and the man just took his necklace off. Have you seen them? Like the necklace, big thickens, like wedding rings. He just went smack and whacked him across the face of the wall. What's that for? He went, and that's for calling him. So leave him alone. He's a good lad. And I've seen him on the telly. And I thought, oh, nice one. After years of being in denial, Jonathan's eating habits remain out of control. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's 3.45 p.m. In 15 minutes, Jonathan will undergo surgery. I'm going to put it back off. Give me a cuddle, man. I love you. I love you. So, I love you. The operation has a 90% success rate. For Jonathan, it's a potential lifeline. Last year, morbidly obese teenager Jonathan Wallace was told he had five years to live. After a lifelong struggle with his weight, Jonathan has decided that invasive stomach surgery is the only solution. We've got to change that lifestyle, haven't we, Jonathan? You'll be getting up at 8 o'clock in the morning to go to the gym. Once we get some of the weight off, that's how you're going to get... The operation will be performed by one of the UK's leading specialist surgeons, Stephen Pollard. The procedure will last 90 minutes. When it's over, Jonathan will have a new stomach and he'll be left with a 15-inch scar as a reminder. Just making an incision to access the stomach and the first observation is that his liver is massively in enlarged with fat infiltration. Well, I'm glad that's not my liver. We try to make Jonathan 
improve his life expectancy and his medical quality of life. That's the thrust of this operation. It has a cosmetic impact, obviously. That isn't the primary reason for doing it. It's to stop Jonathan dying with diabetes and heart disease. That's what we're aiming to do. I think they'd be happier. A lot happier. It's a piece of fat we've just excised from the abdominal wall. It was just uh, going to make it easier to close the wound afterwards. So his liver's enormous. Uh, probably two or three times its correct size, its normal size, and half of that will be fat. I'm trying to it's got to be so late. This is the new small stomach here, and it really is very tiny. We're now going to make a bypass out of the intestine so that even that pouch won't get all its contents absorbed. And for this, we go to the lower compartment of the abdomen, below this, which is the large intestine, to this, which is the small bowel, and this is what we're going to bypass. To begin with, this is very tight, this opening, and it'll be a bit swollen from the surgery, and so he can't go straight onto solids. So immediately after the operation, for the first few weeks, he's going to be on pureed food. It's now five. It would have just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It would end up killing itself. Why not? At least he's growing your legs alive. I'm going to pop you on the scales now, see how much you've lost. Most people aren't sick with this, and a lot of sickness is due to struggling to follow to the word of the letter what was in those guidelines. Mm. 81 and 89, so you're 170 kilos. Your original starting weight was 32 stone. OK? That's what you weighed when you came in. So your weight loss to date is just over five stone, which is about bang on where we'd want to see it at this stage. Most of it was comfort eating. You know, getting depressed because he was so big and he couldn't get about and things like that. Frightened going out because he was going to get caught. But now he's... You know, people at uh, a forum saying, oh, good on you, Jonathan, you're looking great. So what we'd like to do, just roughly, is I'd like to get you to see less than 20 stone at a year. Mm. That's 12 stone down. Do you drink much alcohol? Mm. Do you? I've still been drinking a bit. Like, I haven't been... Like, this week, I haven't had a drink. I bought, I bought some drink for Halloween, and I thought, no, I won't. Good. Did you have any problems with the wound after you went home? Um, no, I thought it was all right. That looks fine. That's healed well, isn't it? No fluid or discharge from it. Mm -hmm. It'll fade. Don't let it get in the sun this year. But the, the redness will go over the next few weeks. Jonathan's first Christmas since he's had his operation. He finds it hard to keep his food down. But... Still early days. But he's doing fantastic and he looks great and he's going to live. And that's the best thing about it. Happy Christmas and a good New Year. It's not nice seeing him having to run out and be sick, but he seems to be happy now. We can see it's coming off. He's at the baby face now. <laughs> I think it's the best part of all Christmas when you carve the chicken or turkey. One of the things in it. Although Jonathan is struggling to manage his diet and continues to overeat, he's already lost four stone in three months. You know what I used to do before? I used to be full as man. I just used to bear and I used to eat more. <laughs> Normally, at Christmas, we um, when I have my food, it's usually piled up. Like you, it's that piled up that you can't put any more on. So like no, it's not. It's just a bit of everything. Good. Like about well, three puddings, one thirty. Be like about well, five of them. So be all mounted up. I'm for me. Literally. Can you measure that, Rusty? Big and can't eat much, and it's bound to come off. It's now two months since Jonathan joined the waiting list for the operation. This morning, he's received the news that he's been waiting for. Surgery has been confirmed for September. The gastric bypass procedure effectively reduces the size of the stomach by bypassing food through part of the small intestine. This results in less food being absorbed by the body. I want to get it done. I want to make my stomach stable. I think it's the last resort now. I think there's a skinny person in every one of us, isn't there, crying to be out? Not in your mind. And if he gets that done, and he has the stapling, he has it every chance of being a skinny person. I don't want to be skinny, skinny. I want to be, like, chubby. 
Or not like skinny, skinny, skinny. The operation has been hailed as a miracle cure for obesity, but it's not without its complications. 1% of those who have the surgery do not survive. For it to be a long-term success, the patient must also radically adjust their lifestyle. In one month, Jonathan will travel to Leeds for his operation, which will be performed by consultant surgeon Mr. Stephen Pollard. The future for somebody like Jonathan is actually quite dismal. He is already 31 stone at 18, and that is massive obesity at that age. He is inevitably going to become diabetic in his lifetime. It's very unlikely he would survive into beyond retirement age, but even if he were to, he'd have appalling quality of life because by then his joints, which are designed to take the weight of a 15 stone man, will be completely worn out. There'll be no cartilage left on his knees. His ankles are already causing him problems now at 18. There are two options. The first is keyhole surgery, which would require Jonathan to lose three stone before the operation could take place. The second is open surgery, a riskier procedure, which would leave Jonathan with 50 staples in his stomach, but which wouldn't require him to lose weight beforehand. My girlfriend's like, she said, you were going to get keeled, so why did you get keeled? I said, because I want open. She said, you don't have to lose three stone, so you don't want to get that done, you want to go the easy way. I said, I don't know, I want to do this my way. A very typical story I get from patients who I see in middle age is they were 10 stone at 10 and 20 stone at 20. But I started to think what weight Jonathan will reach by middle age. He could be one of these patients who gets up to the sort of 50, 60 stone, which is the heaviest weight we've seen patients coming in at. He said, and, and if you drink a lot of alcohol, it will put weight on your bit anyway because it's liquid, isn't it? And like, it absorbs all the fat in it. So he said, the diet probably wouldn't work if you were still doing that. <laughs> but you can't help but drink. <laughs> So I think, I think I took the easy way out, losing weight. Well, when I lose my weight, all this is there. It's going to go to low skin. So when all my stomach started, I'm going to go to the gym. I don't know how to get it pumped up now. Try to not let it sag. Torn it up. That's what I want to do. Try to do that. It's two months since his surgery, and Jonathan is scheduled for a follow-up consultation with Mr Pollard. He's still battling his food cravings. I've had no breakfast today, but what about crisps though? But I can't eat the crisps, I only have to aim the lick this flail off. Today, Gemma has asked not to be filmed, but on the journey to Leeds, she questions Jonathan's commitment to his new eating regime. Well, why am I lying? What did you do? What? So do I eat a full curry? Can I eat a full well, curry? Where are you when you're, when you're thinking so oh, they Stop crying. Know. You just never tell me no because you act normal and then soon you're in front of the camera you just lie about everything and come up with all sorts. Do yeah, do you what? do. No, I don't. You do. No, I don't. You lie about everything. Yeah, you I lie about everything, mate. Yeah. That's why I lashed out last yeah. time. Yeah. Because when you when you're on the way to lead, you were lying about everything. I'm a lying. Yes. Eh? yes. Oh, then what am I lying about there? Eh? Do we eat the full curry, yeah? You sit there. Do we eat the like full curry, yeah? No, no, I'm not exactly. about curry. No. When you got in the oh, car, then Gemma, I said, I said, you're not taking your tablets? And you said, yeah, yeah, I'm still taking them. I I'm said, taking no, them now and again. You said, I've been taking them three times a day. I said, no, you haven't. No, you haven't took one tablet for six weeks. I said, I've been taking weeks. them. You took no one again. That's why you're not taking them. Because you're not taking oh, them. Oh, whatever. Tablets. Fuck off. Yeah. Yeah, fuck off. Why do you want me to come with you then? Shut up. How's it been? It's been okay. Sure? All right. Takes a bit of getting used to, doesn't it? Teething problems. First yeah. six weeks are usually the most difficult period, and it's not uncommon, for instance, to get sickness if you cheat on the diet or if you don't take your tablets yeah, and things I've like been, that. Like, I've been eating food and like kind of forcing it, trying to, trying to, right? But it doesn't work because it comes know, back doesn't, up. It doesn't let you do it. At this stage, you should probably be eating four or five meals a day and drinking plenty between meals, but giving it a good half hour before and after the meal for the food to, to start to digest. If you do that, you won't be sick. It's changed his life totally. Totally, because if, if you never had the operation, if you think about it, it would have just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It would end up killing himself. Why not? At least he's going your later life. I'm going to pop you on the scales now, see how much you've lost. Most people aren't sick with this, and a lot of sickness is due to struggling to follow to the word of the letter, what was in those guidelines. Mm. 81 and 89. 
So you're 170 kilos. Your original starting weight was 32 stone. Okay? That's what you weighed when you came in. So your weight loss to date is just over five stone, which is about bang on where we like, She said, you were going to get keeled, so why did you get keeled? I said, because I want open. She said, you don't have to lose three stone, so you don't want to get that done. You want to go the easy way. I said, I don't know, I want to do this my way. A very typical story I get from patients who I see in middle age is they were 10 stone at 10 and 20 stone at 20. But I shudder to think what weight Jonathan will reach by middle age. He could be one of these patients who gets up to the sort of 50, 60 stone, which is the heaviest weight we've seen patients coming in at. He said, and, and if you drink a lot of alcohol, it will put weight on your bit anyway because it's liquid, isn't it? And like, it absorbs all the fat in it. So he said, the diet probably wouldn't work if you were still doing that. But you can't help but drink. <laughs>
gonna be fucking hard. All right, yeah. Jonathan's trainer will be local gym owner and four times Mr. Universe, Eddie Elwood. I think there's a lot of obese kids in our days, and it's, it's down to, you know, I mean, when we were kids, there wasn't so many fast food restaurants, and people just get lazy, you know, you don't see that many people cooking nowadays, and cooking good food and, and, and natural foods. So I think it's, it is, it's on a steady rise, and it's a shame. I'm going to give you 30 or 40 minutes exercise three times a week. Um, it's pretty intense for you, because obviously you're not used to it. But once, we, once you get into it, you'll probably start enjoying it. Because everyone think, oh, you're just lazy. Well, I like, am lazy though, but if I can't do it, I, I, well, like, I can do it, I know I can. I've done it before. How do you feel after that? I'm aching. Your arms are aching? Your heart's pumping? If John's willing to give the discipline and he enjoys it, and it's not a chore to him, and he really gets stuck in with his diet, in six months, you could lose. With Jonathan out of danger, his mum and two aunts have come to visit. After three days, Jonathan returns home. He's on anti-acid medication and expected to eat only five teaspoons of food a day, the equivalent of 500 calories. Jonathan's stomach will not tolerate a greater volume anymore and he will vomit. But Jonathan's obsession with food is deep-rooted, and he continues to fantasize. Buffet, chicken pie, ball of the crisps, bottle of Dr. Pepper, and steak pie. Right, steak and kidney pie from middle month. But then this fucking shit. I'm trying to make some Sunday's dinner, but it was all blended down and that, and the chicken is... Anyway, I had two days open so came back up. Mm. And the doctor said you probably got up to 15 stone or something like that. I said, no nah, man, or 20 or something would be me. I'd like 20. Only able to consume food in small quantities, it isn't long before Jonathan begins to regret his decision. When I decided to have this operation, I think my mum was more like in there pushing me, go on, get it done, get it done. But like the other day I was thinking, I don't even want this done, probably. I was just thinking it in my head because everyone was saying, get it done, get it done, it's good. It's better if you get it done, you lose weight quicker and this and that. But now I wish I just went into one of them fat camp things and lost it there. Just no, just done my head in. Maybe if I shrunk my stomach normal way. Instead of getting an operation done, I've had it done like a week and I've lost half a stone. And I start eating all my food, I don't know, a couple of months, something like that, a couple of weeks. So I think I, think I took the easy way out, losing weight. For well, when I lose my weight, all this is here, it's going to go to lose skin. So when all my stomach started, I'm going to go to the gym. I don't know how to get up. And if I do this, and I do die, well, then it was meant to be, wasn't it? The operation is tomorrow. Ignoring the rules of his pre-op diet, Jonathan stops off in his local calf for one last full English breakfast. It's up to him at the end of the day to help himself. I mean, he's got a lot of help, hasn't he? And if you don't use that help, well, what can you do? It's up to the individual. I mean, I'm not skinny, but you either want to lose weight or you don't, don't you? In your adult life, what's the lightest you've ever been? Would 
you say roughly? 13. What? 13. 13 stone? Yeah, that's when I was 15 or something. I mean, obviously, no disrespect to you, and if you don't want me to talk about it, tell me to shut up. Yeah, but yeah. it must be difficult for you even to go in the bath, mustn't it, seriously? Don't go in the bath, go in the shower. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying? But is there any medical reason for why you are like that? No, purely, purely doubt and gluttony. You know what I'm saying? When I see you in a couple of years, when walking about, you don't do what you do, you'll say to me, hey, hey, hey. I'm glad you said that because I feel a hundred percent better now than what I did when I first talked to you in that cafe. See you later. God! As the journey to hospital begins, Jonathan seems blissfully unconcerned about the events of the next 48 hours. Feeling suave, cushy. He's yeah, he's well, one way. When he's obvious. in front of the cameras, he doesn't I'm gonna tell fucking them. Live. When he's with me, he always says, I'm worried, I'm nervous, I'm worried, I'm panicking no, in don't. case anything goes wrong. Don't lie. No, don't. Come on. Yeah? Look at me. Come on. Yeah? Yeah, you did yesterday and the day before. Yeah, but I, of course I'm going to be a bit worried. Fucking hell. Yeah, I'm going in for this big operation and I might die. Might die. Oh, how do I feel? I'm nervous. It'd be the last time I see him on Wednesday and he'd have had the operation. I'm not being lazy though, I've tried it, haven't I? No. Yeah, you have. I've tried that. It's sort of you. You think I haven't, but how would you know? You weren't there when I was doing them. Yeah, I should do one last thing for him, which is attend to a diet and he's going to do this operation for you and you couldn't even do that. What? Get up! Stop being a wind. Get up! Are you winging for him? Get up! Beauty, man. It's like a minute, the boy, he's going away, isn't he? And he's going to have an operation and we know it's going to help him. Gemma? Gemma? His stomach will not tolerate a greater volume anymore and he will vomit. But Jonathan's obsession with food is deep-rooted and he continues to fantasise. Buffet. Chicken pie. Ball of the crisps. Bottle of Dr Pepper. Steak pie. Right, steak and kidney pie from middle month. But then this fucking shit. Mum tried to make me some Sunday's dinner, but it was all blended down and that. Like chicken. Yeah. Anyway, I had two taste bones, so came back up. Yeah. And the doctor said you're probably going up to 15 stone or something like that. I said, no, nah, man, or 20 or something would be me. I'd like 20. Only able to consume food in small quantities, it isn't long before Jonathan begins to regret his decision. When I decided to have this operation, I think my mum was more like in there pushing me. Go on, get it done, get it done. But like the other day I was thinking, I don't even want this done, probably. I was just thinking it in my head because everyone was saying, get it done, get it done, it's good. It's better if you get it done, you lose weight quicker and this and that. But now I wish I just went into one of them fat camp things and lost it there. Just no, just done my head in. Maybe if I shrunk my stomach the normal way, instead of getting an operation done. If I'd have done like a week and I've lost half a stone. And I started eating normal food. I don't know, a couple of months, something like that, a couple of weeks. So I think I think I took the easy way out, losing weight. For well, when I lose my weight, all this is here, it's gonna go to low skin. So when all my stomach sorted, I'm gonna go to the gym. I don't know how to get it pumped up now, try to not let it sag. Torn it up. That's what I want to do. Try to do that. It's two months since his surgery, and Jonathan is scheduled for a follow up consultation with Mr. Pollard. He's still battling his food cravings. I've had no breakfast today. I've got a bag of crisps though. But I can't eat the crisps, I only have to aim the lick that's flailed off. Today, Gemma has asked not to be filmed. But on the journey to Leeds, she questions Jonathan's commitment to his new eating regime. 
Well, why am I lying? What did you do? What? So do I eat a full curry? Can I eat a full well, curry? Well, they're not here when you're when you're thingy. So oh, stop crying. You just irritates me now because you act normal and then soon you're in front of the camera and you just laugh.